oh wonders of the world So many wonders to behold So many questions in my mind So many questions, so little time Answers so so easily come Unless you know to ask someone Who is a master of the trade Ask them how clouds get their shape Welcome to What the Heck is That with David Shaventura Hi everyone and welcome back. I am so excited to introduce my next guest to you. Hero is a dancer and teacher and I have been her student for years now. She is the community educational outreach person for my favorite concert series music, which I talked about the last season in episode 3 with George but she has a long list of experience to share with us today. Before we get into the interview, let's take a look at what Hado has done over the years. Do you know you will a dancer? Well, my parents say I was always moving around. And when I was about two and a half, they put me in a little kids movement class. And from there, I just always wanted to dance. But I knew I wanted to be a professional dancer when I was 10. Um, I was studying at a local dance studio and doing dance competitions. And there was an ad in the local newspaper that there was going to be an open call for children to be in the Nutcracker. Um, and it was going to be led by a principal dancer who worked with the Ballet Russe. And I could not wait to audition. Um, and I had to leave my dance studio at the time. They didn't want you to do both things. Um, but I chose at that point at 10 years old that I wanted to train with the best and I had a lovely um, experience. I worked with that company for a few years. I got cast as a, a boy in the party scene. And by the end, I was Clara in the party scene and doing lots of other roles in the production. And it was really just, a, yeah, that was the beginning. Sounds like you were just born to dance. I think you might be right. <laughs> How were you introduced to teaching? Um, I was introduced to teaching uh, by my teenage years. I was studying at a school called Vineland Regional Dance Company. And they had invited me to, do, um, to be an assistant teacher with their younger students when I was about 15 years old. So I've been learning how to teach dance since I was 15 years old. Wow, maybe you will also born to teach. I think they're hand in hand. Which do you like more dancing or teaching dance? Hmm, that is a tricky question, Mr. David. Um, you know, both forms, performing and teaching, utilize our bodies as our expression to communicate with other people. And so for my career, most of my life dancing and teaching have been sort of intertwined. Um, but when you're the choreographer or the dance maker or the teacher, you're basically using the language and other people's instruments. And you have to be able to communicate to them what you want them to do to bring the story or the vision of your piece into, into being. And when you're the dancer, um, there's, there's this amazing power because you're using your own body and your own um, experiences and connections to bring to life those stories or that idea. And um, 
then of course there's all the fun parts that go along with performing with the like costumes and music and props, lights, the cast, the crew, all of it. Um, and the audience, the audience, but which I know we're all missing very much right now. We have a new audience going on these days um, virtually, but uh, just hearing that applause and feeling the energy. So for me, there's nothing like performing, but I will always love both teaching and dancing. I also love to perform and I know that energy you are talking about. I know you do. You're an amazing performer. And it is. You get nervous at first and uh, even when you've been doing it as long as I have and that adrenaline is just so much fun to, to, to get to give uh, something to the crowds and, and to feel them enjoy, hopefully, what you're sharing with them. Hera, is there any way that you can show off any of your costuming and shoes? Sure. So I'm going to grab a couple pairs. So um, a lot of dance, a lot of dance takes place um, in different styles of movement. We'll use different shoes. Some of that is based on how you want to move um, or the thing that you're dancing on, the material. So. For example, in contemporary dance um, and a lot of native dances, bare feet. So the things that you carry around with you all the time work wonderfully. Um, when dancers want to have a little more slide and slip, they'll use a good old fashioned sock. And that is what you'll see a lot of contemporary dancers. As a matter of fact, I just did a piece where our costume shoe was a sock. <laughs> and uh, that gives you a lot of, almost like you're skating on the floor, a lot of um, ability to slide. Um, in ballet, uh, you'll wear something called a ballet slipper. And it looks just like that. It's very thin. It can be made from canvas or leather. It usually has elastic straps to hold it on your feet. Sometimes there's a full bottom. This is called a split sole, which allows you to bend your foot very easily. Um, and this allows you to have connection with the floor. When, ba when you're doing ballet moves especially, you want to have a nice uh, connection with the floor. Now, if you are a fan of ballet, you'll also know the famous point shoe. Um, and these are to dance. Uh, primarily women were wearing them, but now you'll find men and women wear them. And um, for strength, it takes quite a lot of strength in the toes. You're actually, if you put your feet on the tip of your toe, you'll notice that only one or two toes touch the ground. And that's what you're standing on and balancing on in these beautiful shoes. They're always tied with ribbons. Um, and they also have elastic. Some ballerinas will, what they call, darn the tip of them, which I don't have done here, um, but it adds an extra layer of threading um, so that the shoes don't uh, break down so fast. Ballet dancers will go through these, oh goodness, if they're in performance, maybe one or two per show. And they're all um, hand sewn by the dancers uh, as far as how they want them, where they want their elastic or their ribbons to go. Now, if you switch styles of dance, if you switch styles of dance, um, one of my favorites, and I know yours too, David, is the tap shoe. And this has a tap on the tip and a tap on the heel. And this is what's considered a flat tap shoe. This is one of my favorite pairs. Um, the heel was built up a little bit to help with the sound. Um, for females, there's also a heel tap shoe where they would be um, up on about two inches or three inches high. Um, and you'll notice here that... Um, there's a little bit of uh, rubber here to help you not slip as well. Um, so that would be the heel tap shoe. Now, similar to a heel tap shoe, and I'm gonna show you the difference here, is what we call a flamenco shoe. And if you look at the tips, you'll notice that on the flamenco shoe, there are quite a lot of little nails and the same on the heel versus the tap shoe, which is a, a flat piece of metal or a tap. And so they create different sounds um, but both make rhythms with the shoe, with the feet. Um, and so that's, that's pretty great. Um, what other fun shoes do I have over here? Let me take a peek. I also brought a pair of ballroom shoes to show you uh, for the girls. Um, these are made with all different strap configurations, all different colors, um, usually two to three inches in height. They're very light in comparison to maybe a chorus shoe, which is made with a thicker heel. And then I even had, and a lot of dancers will have a bracket put on so that your heel doesn't break while you're dancing on them. Um, and this one has like a sort of crisscross leather toe. Um, this one has lots of straps. 
But the difference is, again, on the bottoms, on the core shoe, this has rubber added to it so that you're not slipping. And on the bottom of a ballroom shoe, it's actually suede material. So um, it helps you slide. And if you're watching ballroom dancing, you'll notice they glide across the floor um, and need that sort of lack of friction to be able to do the moves efficiently and beautifully. And unless you have more questions, I have more shoes, but that's kind of the best of the best <laughs> from my closet. In dance, many of the costumes are very expensive. Dance companies will have them made and then they will keep them and they will have different sizes made. So when you're cast in a piece on the back tab, it'll have like your name or, or the many dancers that have worn it before and you just have to remember, oh, this was Amelia's and I have to wear Amelia's costume um, or whoever. Um, the costumes can be very expensive. The most expensive costume that I know that I wore um, was in a production of Orfeo and Eurydice with the LA Opera. And they had actually two of these made for each dancer in the piece. They were hand dyed silk dresses, um, many, many layers. Um, and one was in all sorts of blues and one was in all sorts of reds for sort of like the light, beautiful, airy section. And then uh, we did another part of the opera where we were fiery and we had raffia burnt heads um, and they spray painted our faces black. Um, anyway, so those dresses cost about $10,000 each to make. So I do not have that in my closet. <laughs> what I do have in my closet is just some demonstrations. This is a, um, a little tutu. So in ballet, a tutu will have a skirt that kind of lays flat with layers of tulle and it's attached to a bodice. Uh, usually it's a zipper or in a in a really uh, well-made tutu, they'll be hook and eyed and you cannot put yourself into them. Someone has to help dress you. Um, it's kind of a fun tradition. Um, and they, they kind of put you in nice and tight. Um, I brought a, a, a blouse that is a men's blouse because um, I had it in my closet and it has sort of a Renaissance type um, sleeve. So these can be used in any sort of traditional ballet storytelling or Shakespeare type storytelling. And I don't know that you've ever worn one of those, David, but I know, um, I know that many in uh, performing arts for all have. Um, a lot of pieces that I like to do are styled in the 1940s time period. So um, I actually like to thrift shop and find costumes like that and then have things added for the dancers. So this is just a simple dress. Um, you'll see me dancing in this dress, but this is a 1940s dress. It has buttons all at the back. Um, and then we added slits and some things under the arms to allow for movement. This dress, hold on, I'm gonna get it for you. This dress was made for me uh, dancing in a musical called West Side Story out in Thousand Oaks with um, Cabrillo Music Theater. And um, it's a 1950s sort of prom dress style. Um, and it's kind of fun. It has a nice big skirt and it moves very well. Um, and then it also, it's like I'm going in and out of the camera. And it also has a sash that would wrap around. I don't know, there we go. Okay. Um, this is a flamenco skirt that um, I used for a production in, it's very hard to see this way. It's a flamenco skirt and top that I used in a production with the New York Philharmonic. Um, and it has a little bit of a ruffle and a slit on one side of the long skirt, which keeps going and going and going. And then my last demonstration is a rehearsal skirt. So often, we don't get to wear our costumes when we're rehearsing in a show because we could damage them. And because we want to take care of those, they'll often do rehearsal skirts. There's rehearsal tutus. There's basically rehearsal wear for any style that you would need. Um, and this is a fun can-can uh, rehearsal skirt. Um, so in a can-can, when you lift up the skirt, there's usually lots of ruffles that you're shaking. So they're, they're sort of sewn in layers and it goes on and on and on. Um, so that's kind of a fun, example of a of a rehearsal skirt i also have rehearsal tutus and things but we don't need to see those now so there's a lot of different shoes and a lot of different costumes um, and styles of wear that people dance it the most important thing is that you can execute the movement that you need to so if it's a slippery type of movement you want to be able to slide you're going to wear a specific type of footwear and if you need to be able to 
have your balance really good and not slide. Um, you know, maybe you'll have rubber. There's things called, uh, what do you call that? Uh, rosin, sorry, my brain. Uh, rosin, which um, you can add to ballet shoes and things to help make it a little stickier. Um, sometimes even a little bit of water, depending on the shoe, if it doesn't ruin the shoe. Um, and then the same thing with costumes. They can be as elaborate as $10,000 and more, like you'd see on major companies, or they could be something that you have out of your closet that as long as you can move well, depending on what the story or the point of the piece is and how they want everyone to look. Those costumes and shoes are so beautiful. I wish you would wear one for us. <laughs> one for you. I don't know how to do that in my little space, but um, I could try. Let's see. I know everyone always likes the point shoes, so I'll see if I can quick slip on one. And I don't know how I will show you this, but I actually did about a piece when I was dancing with a company called Helios here in Los Angeles. And we did a, a, a piece where we danced in one heel on one foot and barefoot on the other, which made for a very interesting movement exploration because you're uneven in your leg length. Um, it also caused a lot of us to have to have, uh, make sure we were, stretching out the other side after rehearsals because after you know six or eight hours in a rehearsal where one leg is higher than the other it could cause some damage anyway i don't know if you can let's see if i tip my my camera down on my chair here so that is a point shoe and uh and yeah they're really fun and you roll through them and roll up them and anyway. <laughs> i don't know if that was valuable to you david but um thank you for asking me to bring some of my things out of my closet. It was very fun to explore. My kids like it. They think it's a treasure chest. Thank you, Hedda. Thank you, David. You guys know the deal. You will have to come back next week to watch part two of this episode. See you then. What the heck is that? Wonders, oh wonders on the board. So many wonders to be old. So many questions in my mind. So many questions over the time. Ask them so so easily calm. I let you know to ask someone who is a master on the trade. How cloud get the shade? <laughs>